Hey shooters, welcome back to the Shooters Resource Channel. Today we're going to be looking at resizing brass for both precision, but I'll also show you a little bit of bolt processing as well because I do that often with my 556, 9, and 45 brass. Before we get started, go ahead and take a second. Hit that like and subscribe button and support the channel. All right, shooters, today we're going to be looking at resizing and trimming brass. Last time on the channel and in the first video of this series, we looked at cleaning brass. So you can see here some of this 556 five, range brass, and we're, we're taking it to this essentially brand new, perfectly annealed brass. For precision bottleneck cartridges, you might not need to clean them every time if they don't need it. But for range brass, you're probably going to have to clean it, especially if it's dirty. So check out that video. I'll have uh, the link in the description as well as up in the right corner of the screen right now. All right, now let's talk about resizing and trimming. I've got a couple different dies out here to begin with to look at kind of what it is, what is needed for resizing. Now, I've got, as mentioned in the first video, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of about 15 years experience reloading. And in that time, I've really used four different brands of dies. I've used Lee Reloading, which is probably the least costly option. RCBS, which is probably my second favorite. Redding, which is my most preferred, especially for precision cartridges. Redding's Type S bushing die is one of the most popular ones used by precision and bench rest shooters. And another I've used is Hornady, which is kind of a middle of the road brand. I do try to always purchase carbide dies. They've got titanium and tungsten and all kind of different uh, types, but with carbide dies, they don't require lube for small straight wall cartridges like nine and 45 but they'll definitely still require lubrication for your bottleneck cartridges like 65, 308, 243. All right, now let's look at types of dies. All right, when we look at resizing dies, full length sizing is the way to go. There will be people out there that tell you neck size your brass, fire form your cartridges, and they're gonna fit perfectly to your chamber. But all of the professionals, whether it's extreme long range shooting out past two miles, it's F-class shooting little tiny groups at 600 or 1,000 yards, or it's PRS. And you'll find that all the professionals are using full length size brass. Now, they're not sizing it down to SAMI specs. They're taking a few thousands off all the dimensions. That way it reliably fits and they can cycle the bolts really easy. You're not stressing your components, you're not stressing your equipment. Now there are two main types of full length sizing. There's the traditional expander ball, which is really good for mixed brass and range pickups. I use it for my 5.56 and 223 because it uses a small little ball to expand the interior diameter of the neck. The only challenge with the expander ball style is it's working your brass twice. For range pickup brass, I'm not worried about it, but it essentially works the neck uh, down smaller than the expander ball when you go fully into the die body. And then when you remove the brass from the die, you're, you're allowing that expander ball to size the neck. So that's the second time it's sized. Using an expander ball is ideal for mixed brass where the brass wall thicknesses are not consistent because you're driving a consistent inside diameter that's two to three thousandths smaller than the projectile. Now the second type is a bushing die. A bushing die does the opposite. It actually uses a small bushing with a hole in it and that hole sizes the outside of the casing. So you're sizing your brass walls with the die body and then the bushing is sizing the neck. Now Redding does provide a stem with an expander ball and depriming pin as well as a sleeve for the depriming pin if you don't want to expand your brass via expander ball. I go ahead and remove the stem 
completely from the equation and just use the bushing. And this is what a lot of professionals are using to get really good accuracy. So it's really consistent, but it also only works your brass once. So you're moving the brass less because you're only sizing uh, the neck at the full extent into the die body. When it comes to neck diameter, to ensure proper neck tension, I always want my inside diameter of my neck to be about two to three thousandths smaller than my projectile diameter. Now this expander ball on my Hornady 223 dies is just perfect at .221 after I polished it. And the bushing die from Redding, they sell separate bushings that can be had in various sizes in one thousandth increments. And for my bushing die from Redding, I'm using their 291 bushing, but they offer them in one thousandth increments. So you can select the perfect size for the brass that you're using. One trick is if you've already got a loaded cartridge is to use your calipers and take a OD dimension on your brass casing. And then all you've got to do is subtract either two to three thousandths from that and go ahead and order your bushing die from Redding. The last tool for resizing is an expanding die. This is really good for getting very consistent neck sizing. So if you really want to get neck tension uh, perfect, there's a lot of die makers like Sinclair or most of your major die makers will make expanding dies. You will need them for straight wall cartridges like 9, 45, 10 millimeter, 40. And uh, the main thing is, is it's going to flare the edge of that cartridge and allow you to seat the projectile uh, much easier. All right, welcome back to the reloading bench. Uh, before we get started, let's go over just a few basics. First, I typically try to wear gloves while I'm reloading. This stuff's pretty nasty, it can get all over your hands. Wearing gloves is always a good idea for safe practice. All right, some other things to talk about. Before I uh, start reloading a big batch, it's always a good idea to clean your dies. It will help with the longevity of your dies. It will make sure that there's nothing in there that might add to inconsistency between one batch of brass and the next. All right, now I'm going to show you a few things that I do for reloading precision. I'm reloading on a Hornady lock and load press. This is a fully progressive press. I really like this press from Hornady. There's a lot of other great options out there. Most people uh, that you'll see are running Dillons or other things like that when it comes to fully progressive presses, but there are other options out there. What I do like about this Hornady is it's got this large cylinder here and it's very stable. I find that when I'm resizing brass, I can keep concentricity and dimensions very consistent with this press. Plus it's got plenty of leverage for resizing. So let's look at how we get started with a new set of 6.5 Creedmoor dies. Now these dies aren't new to me, but I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do. What I'll normally do is I'll start by raising the shell holder on the press all the way up. Then I'll screw in my die. Each one of these dies are going to have a collar. And a lot of collars are going to have a lock nut on there, which is just a little Allen key. This one from Redding has one. It's already locked in on where I need to be on this die. Now that's, that's a great starting point. I'm not going to always just trust that blindly. What I'm gonna do is, is I'm going to use a couple tools to validate that I am bumping my shoulders back two thousandths, which is just pretty standard. It's what's, what most shooters do. And there are mixed opinions on, you know, how far to bump them back, but I bump mine back two thousandths. So what I want to do is I'm going to take my calipers and I'm going to take the Hornady comparator tool. There's some other brands out there. I purchased the Hornady. It's worked really well for me. And what we're going to use it for right now is, is I'm going to compare the shoulder of my brass from a fired cartridge. This casing has been fired six times. It's been uh, annealed and now it's ready to be resized. So this is a fired cartridge. One thing to be cognizant of is if you do it and it has the primer, then you could be getting a reading off of the primer 
versus the uh, versus the bottom of the case. So let's go ahead and deprime a couple pieces of brass. This is my lead decapping die that we talked about before. I'll go ahead and put it in, and we'll deprime five pieces of brass. Now I've got the brass deprimed. Let's look at, and we'll set everything kind of over here. 1 1.385. 1 1.38. 1 1.38 so we're looking at our brass to be right there at about 1.538 so we want to resize it down to 1.536 so we're going to take our reading neck sizing die type s die and we're going to set it in here as our second stage in our operation so we're going to deprime on the first then we're going to resize on the second uh, today we're going to be using Imperial Sizing Die Wax. It's what I like to use for my larger case cartridges. For 5.56, five, I like to use spray-on uh, lube. All right, let's go ahead and load some rounds. When you're resizing bottleneck cartridges, Brass has a lot of spring back to it. So you always want to make sure to pause for a few seconds when the brass is fully seated into the die. This ensures that the brass retains the dimensions that you're trying to achieve. Now I'm going to check the shoulder height with my comparator tool. It's common to find that the shoulder height will actually grow if it's not hitting the shoulder portion of the die body. So now I'm going to lower the die and let's see if I can actually bump the shoulders back. Don't be discouraged if this takes a few times. and sometimes it's common to over bump the shoulders. If that happens, it's not really a big deal. I normally just mark it on the bottom with a Sharpie and use it as a cold bore shot on my next rain session. All right, perfect. I'm coming in right at 1.536, which is exactly two thousandths below my fired brass. And I was able to repeat it two cases in a row. Next, I want to check my first two cases on the Sinclair concentricity gauge. I'm looking to make sure that my concentricity from my neck to my case body is three thousandths or under to ensure that the resizing processes work properly. And you can see here that I'm just over a thousand for both my cases. Another test that I do is I want to make sure that the brass will cycle properly. I'll check the bolt while the chamber is empty, and then I'll insert my cases into the bolt and make sure that it takes no more effort to open and close. Both pieces of brass check out. Now we're ready to reload the rest.
and after resizing the brass, it's time to trim it. I use a Lee trimming tool that has a caliber specific stem that gives you a constant trim length. Then I chamfer with the Sinclair chamfer tool as well as the RCBS chamfer tool. Now with bulk brass, I don't trim every piece of brass. What I'll do is I'll take my calipers and I'll find a piece of brass that I want to use as a max size piece of brass. And then I'll quickly go through my batch of brass to see if any are longer than that max size that I've selected. And then I'll just trim those. I do have a Hornady trimming system and it works fine. I just prefer the Lee trimmer while using a power drill. It just makes things a lot easier. All right, shooters, I hope you enjoyed this and learned something from my reloading process. There's a lot of different ones out there. I'm not saying that mine is any better than maybe the one that you're doing now, but this works really well for me. Go ahead and take a second, hit that like and subscribe button, support the channel. And as always, thank you all and God bless.